Alright, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and I'm in glory be to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. Dabbing on us to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone of rule well. And blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And, um, you know, this is just going to be a quick in transit. Um, you know, something that was on my mind as I was watching the apostles live at the camp. And they were speaking, you know, they were making a point about the Apostle Paul and how he was beheaded. And, um, you know, it just got me thinking, you know. It just got me thinking about the times to come. Like, it got me thinking about, you know, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. Because, indeed, that's exactly what we are expected to do. All right? When you when you call yourself serving, you know, the, the, the king of the universe, Yahweh Barashim, Yahweh Shai, you know, this is about laying down your life. You know, and that's why the scriptures speak about, you know, counting the cost, man. This ain't no joke, okay? This ain't no walk in the park. This is about counting the cost and knowing what you're involved in. Like the apostles always tell us that we have to know what we're involved in. And this, you know, when we read through the scriptures, the scriptures tell us that, you know, the men that followed after Yahweh Shai, man, they, they didn't have it easy. You know, they, they eventually, they got put to death, all right? And, you know, you catch yourself serving after and following after the lamb. Remember, the lamb was slain, you know, but he conquered death. Yeah, he rose after he was slain, but he rose again after the third day. Okay, now, what you got to understand is the scripture says a servant isn't greater than a master. Now, ultimately, we know that the scripture says in these days that, you know, this, there are some that shall not taste of death. But nevertheless, we don't know who that some are. We don't know who they are. Okay, if you don't know who they are, then, you know, we got to, you know, we have to, you know, have it in the mind, have it always have it in the forefront of our mind that it could be us that has to, you know, pretty much give up our lives for this truth, man. Which ultimately we're not even living anyway. All right, it's it's funny because as I'm saying that like, you got this guy that's just juggling at the at the traffic lights. He's just juggling, man. You see this folly? This place is full of folly, man. You know, and, and the scripture says folly is set in great dignity, man. And you know. How could you be in that mindset of folly and jolliness and, and merry hearted and all of that, knowing what's about to happen, man? Knowing that Jacob's trouble is just around the corner. We gotta blow the trumpet. We've got a job to do. Okay? Knowing that we've counted the cost, knowing what it means to serve Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shire, man. Alright? Whether it be that we have to uh, be put to death for serving the Lord, then so be it, man. But the point that I'm making is hey, those men. That followed after Yahweh Shai, you know, they, you know, they, they, they had to taste of the death, man. You know, I'm talking about the disciples, man. You had the, uh, the apostle John; he got sent to the Isle of Patmos, man. Okay, he got sent to an island known as Patmos, okay, and that's where he received. And the Lord kept him alive to receive what? And that's why we have the Book of Revelation today, man. And the Lord told him, "Thou shalt prophesy again before many, you know, tongues and nations." Loosely paraphrasing. Okay, but the point remains, you know, that's why the scripture says in Surah, the second chapter, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Now, the hour of temptation is about to come down upon the whole world, man, to try all them that dwell upon the earth. Remember, we're coming into that time where we're going to be presented with a choice, whether to take the MOTB, the mark of the beast, or whether to die if we have to serve and worship in Yahweh, Barashim, Yahweh, Shai, man, you know? And like you said, hey, the scriptures say that they, there is no greater gift, right, than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. Or the scriptures also say that precious in the in the in the sight of the Lord is what the death of his saints. Okay, now I've got a scripture. I'm gonna read you this scripture. Okay, um, I believe it's in um, the book of Hebrews. All right, Hebrews 11. Let me get that up. Hebrews 11. Uh, right, bear with me. Let me just pull this up. All right, and we brought this out of the camp as well um, last week, man. Um, this is a heavy scripture, man, but this is something that we have to meditate on. All right, um, this is Hebrews 11. 
and 36. It says, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Some of us may be cast into concentration camps, man. Some of us may be grabbed up. Like the scripture says that they shall be like madmen sparing none. Okay, we're in the times of the end, man. And Esau, he's going to go all out to try and stay in power. Because the scriptures say, the prophecy is written that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So he's going to grab certain of us up. Okay, and that's a very, very, very high possibility. I remember the video that Apostle Gabar did a while back known as The Darkest Hour, man. And I remember that video, The Darkest Hour, and it was a heavy video, man. And I, I even believe he, he, he re-uploaded it one time. Okay, The Darkest Hour. Because guess what? Everyone's going to have their darkest hour. Did not Yahweh Shai have his darkest hour? Okay, and he prayed. Did he not go to the Garden of Gethsemane and pray to the Heavenly Father that the cup could be removed from him, which the cup represented the, the, the torments that he had to go through? Okay, so we're going to have our darkest hour. And Yahweh Shai was under so much stress that he was sweating giant drops of blood. Okay, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, the, and what does Gethsemane mean? Which is a gnomon omen. Okay, it means oil press. And Yahweh Shai is the anointed, right? He is the oil that was pressed in the spirit, man. Okay, so that, that's a, the Apostle Bar brought that out a while back. And when that hit me, it always stuck with me, man. So we're about to be pressed in the spirit. We're about to go through our darkest hour, man. And if you don't believe that, then you're really, you don't involve, you don't know what you're involved in. Okay, Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, at one point he said, what, my father, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? Okay, because the Lord, you know, the, he felt the presence of the Lord leave him when he was on the cross, man. Now, answer yourself, ask yourself this question. What would you do in that time? If you feel like at the end, you know, you have the, because remember the scripture says the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Which when you go into that word scarcely, it means hardly, hardly and barely, basically. Basically, by the skin of our teeth will we make it out of here, man. This ain't about doing cartwheels onto a chariot, bro. Right, the scripture says much is given, much is required, bro. Okay, let me keep on reading. It says they were stoned, they were sawn asunder. There were some accounts where I believe, which the brother Shakar always goes into over here in the UK, that Isaiah was sawn, you know, uh, was sawn in half, I believe. You know, uh, it says they were, temp were tempted, were tempted, right? And what did Yahweh Shai say? To the disciples in the garden he says look watch ye therefore as well as pray that ye enter not into what temptation so the hour of temptation is coming man and we gotta watch as well as pray that we don't get taken you know taken into the temptation of esau and what he's got to offer you know the digital all basically the mark of the beast you know uh, the uh, electronic tag okay it's in order that we may buy or sell we trust in him rather than trusting in the lord because the lord said my servant shall eat Okay, remember, a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven, man. Okay, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And whatever we get, remember, we're going through what we have to go through because we sinned against the Heavenly Father. Micah 7 and 9, right? It says, We're tempted, we're slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. When you serve the lord and you follow after the lamb whithersoever he goeth look what they did to the lamb they said free barabbas man look what they did to yahweh shai okay they mocked him they scorned him okay they uh they put a crown of uh, thorns on him and again i said they said free barabbas they would rather uh free a criminal than yahweh shai man so if you come to serve the lord definitely prepare yourself for temptation count the cost know what you're involved in man Okay, and it says of whom the world was not worthy, man. They were not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in the caves of the earth. That's why the scripture says, be ye as pilgrims upon the earth, man. The time is coming where we ain't going to be able to just go into supermarkets. We ain't going to be able to just operate on the society, use the world as abusing it, as not abusing it. That's Satan. Use the world as not abusing it as we have been. You know, jacking in and jacking out, just like Neil from The Matrix, doing what you got to do. You know, uh, uh, having a job, you know, all these things that, you know, you know, uh, you could so-called take for granted right now in these last days, they're going to be taken from us, man. All right. And it's going to happen quick. Remember that when the, uh, the uh, uh, yeah, um, 
Apostle Taha said, I was about to say the Apostle Paul says the spirit. The yeah, Apostle Taha said, um, you know, when the, the MOTB is pushed, that everything is going to move quick, man. You know, like a supermarket just to the left, a little local supermarket. You know, you can go in there, you can get a packet of, I don't know, you can get your, your, your drink, you can get your water, you can get your, your groceries, whatever, man. Okay, but there's going to come a time where all transactions are going to have to be made on an MOTB, the Revelation 13 and 16, man. And if you ain't got that, you're going to have to be off the grid and relying totally on your Howard Barsham, Yahweh Shai. And that's why the things that are written before time are written for our learning. Things like Elijah being fed from uh, by ravens, right? Being brought bread and cooked meat, okay? Or, or bread and flesh. The scripture says bread and flesh in the morning and in the evening. These things are supposed to strengthen our faith, okay? For whatsoever things are written before time are written for our learning. That we, through comfort and hope of the scriptures, might have... Comfort and patience of the scriptures Might have hope Loosely paraphrasing, you know So, hey That's all I wanted to say, man You know, just a few words of um, Exhortation, Lord willing through the spirit Was edifying The scriptures tell us in Acts 14 and 22 That we are to exhort the disciples, right Earnestly exhort them to continue in the faith And that we through much tribulation Enter into the kingdom, man Remember, much is given Much is required Count the cost, man no man that having put his hand to the plow and looking back is what? Fit for the kingdom. So this ain't about looking back to the affairs of the world. Remember, they hate them that rebuketh in the gate. Okay? They, we are not of the world, bro. We died to this world. So if we got to give up this flesh, this earthly tabernacle, if you will, you know, if we got to, you know, if, if our spirit gets recalled back to the heavenly father, which is the father of spirits, then guess what? Then so be it, bro. All right, and when you before the judgment seat, before the throne now, hey, the Lord can look down on you and say, yeah, man, hey, well done, you know? And then you're going to be complaining to the Heavenly Father how long until that not avenge our blood of them that dwell upon the earth, you know? Just like those that have gone before us are doing, man. Okay? Because if you die in this truth, man, and that's a precious, hey, you die, die serving your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, the Lord said, look, he's not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, man. There's a reward, Coming to the men that stand stiffly for the names of Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. And you best believe it, man. Alright? But much is given, much is required. This ain't like again. This ain't about doing cartwheels into the chariots, man. Alright? So with that, man, I pray you all can were edified and uplifted through the spirit. Lord willing, hey, I'll come back with another video, man. Just remember, hey, the men before, the men of old that served, that followed after Yahweh Shai, hey, they went through some hell, man. They went through hell. Now, ultimately, we know that in this time, the scriptures tell us in Isaiah 59, right? Is it 59 or 56? I believe it's 59. You know, when the enemy shall come in as a flood, then the spirit of the Lord shall lift up that standard against him, man. Remember, the enemy is going to come in like a flood. That's talking about Esau, the military, them troops, them troops that are going to come in and take you out of your homes and whatever. Guess what? Some of us are going to get spiritual powers, man. So they're going to roll in these last days, but the Lord is also going to turn us up. Some of us are going to get spiritual powers, man. And in a day of thy power, thy people shall be willing. You don't want to be on the other side of, of or, or scoffing. You don't want to be a scoffer in these last days, man. When the Lord shows spiritual power through his men and you were scoffing and you were scorning. Now all of a sudden, you're going to have to think twice. You're going to have to be like, oh shit, I scoffed against these men. And now look what they're doing through the spirit in front of my very eyes, man. All of you scoffers and scorners, man. That's why the scripture says every idle word that a man shall speak. That they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. This ain't a fucking game, man. This ain't a joke. Okay? We know what we're involved in. We know what we've given up. We know that we're already dead to this world. We know that we're just existing right now. We've counted the cost. And Lord willing, that's why the scripture says, He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. This is about enduring unto the end. And the word endure means to make hard. Right? 2 Timothy 2 and 3 says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Right? The affairs of this world. Right? We know perfectly that the fashion of this world passeth away, man. All right? It's on its way out. Esau is the end of the world. You can clearly see that we're in the end days. Look at what's going on on the earth. The uproars of the people. The draconian measures that are being pushed by Esau. The earthquakes in diverse places. The wars. The rumors of wars. Look at what's going on on the earth, bro. 
And you can see that now. You measure the time diligently. If you're circumspect and the Lord is dealing with you in the spirit, you'll be able to understand very clearly that we are in the last days. Just like the Apostle Paul said, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, man. You know what time it is, man. And look what the Apostle Paul had to go through, man. All right? And he said, look, he, he, hey, man, <laughs> he wished he could go through the stuff that Yahweh Shai went through, man. Okay, that's what the Apostle Paul said. Everything he said, he count everything but dung that he may win Yahweh Shai, man. Lord willing, we've done enough, or we can do enough, which we can never really do enough, but we're going to do enough to have Yahweh Shai have mercy on us in these last days, man, that we may be saved and get up on them, get a seat up on them ships, man. You know? So with that, man, hey. We have, hey, we, this is a message of hope, okay? This ain't a message of doubt. This ain't a message of fear, but this is a message of hope, man. Understand that. And hope that is seen as not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Remember that. We are prisoners of hope. Till the next time, I'm going to say shalom.